the different kind of tier list, the one that you are most interested in is back and we're talking about melees and why you should and you should not play a couple of these melees on the list here. Obviously this is biased, but it is based on sure. experience we had with all of the melees in all type of content, except PvP maybe. Yeah, we haven't, we, done. we haven't done PvP in a while yeah. and it's mostly from the perspective of somebody that wants to main a spec. Obviously numbers can always change and as we've seen in the last couple of months, the tuning is really really on point and we see specs go up and down so we're not really gonna focus on meta although being able to perform is probably a factor but it's not going to decide if it's going to be s tier or d tier but mostly in the in the sense of you know the entry level for people the learning curve and all of that stuff that's kind of the things that we're looking for yeah what goes in damage wise sure utility fantasy how much fun it is you know performers will play a factor into this definitely as well and if you like this type of content make sure to hit that subscribe because, listen, you don't really want to miss on the videos we do over here. Like, we do daily videos on World of Warcraft covering a whole range whole of range. topics. All so, of click that subscribe because a lot of you aren't subscribed to the channel. And hit that notification bell as well. This is really important because it will let you know, not intrusive, not in an intrusive way. No, but it will no. let you know that, hey, there's a new video out. Oh, for sure. For Definitely. Sure, sure. And you'll be supporting the channel. Yeah. All right. And also, let us know in the comments how you feel. <laughs> in general <laughs> okay arms warrior now arms warrior <laughs> is i have a, a love and hate relationship with arms warrior I, I i get through cycles with it sometimes i just feel the need to play a melee that you know isn't just <laughs> uh, and it has that more you know tacticality to it and a little arms bit does that, yeah. into it yeah uh but then you have that lust for you know just <laughs> <laughs> go well, to kill. be fair, with arms, you don't you don't go blah, 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 at the beginning of the pack when you have all of the cooldowns. And the big difference between arms and obviously the you know the elephant in the room fury is that with arms you explode more, but far uh, less often. But it is fun, and it does have a lot of tools that actually make arms really good spec to play something that other people don't have. For instance, you have a die by the sword, which is like 100% parry. You can taunt and die by the sword. You can do stuff. It can spell reflect a lot, the, oh, for a, a sure, lot for the sure. abilities and stuff. Yeah, you, you definitely have the tools to do good and survive in a lot of scenarios. It's just, I don't think it's everybody's cake, uh, Arms no. Warrior. Uh, especially because you have to understand when, once you get into Arms Warrior, you really have to pay attention to your weapon swing, which is a big factor into playing this. And for me, as much as I understand and respect that as a big thing mechanic you have to be aware of, I feel it's a little bit outdated. I mean, arms can be a tactical, more uh, planned out melee spec without that weapon swing thingy being being baked into there. Uh, on that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you decide where you want to place uh, this. I think you arms is a, is a solid B tier. It does okay. have a lot of damage. It's struggling right now because we're talking about performance in rage. You're probably gonna struggle a little bit. And outside of cooldowns, it's a little bit bland. And like you mentioned, the weapon swing timer. If you need to know when range is coming in, because if you just spend range like you rage like you would with let's say fury, for instance. You're just gonna starve yourself to death and you're gonna lose out on damage which is not something that is very it's especially told to you once you pick up the spec and you might figure out like okay what am i doing wrong i'm just pressing all the buttons i'm spending all my rage and yeah that's probably why we won't rank arms too high up for new players but it is a very good spec yeah it's definitely in the you should try it out okay it's not a hundred percent you should play but definitely should try it out assassination rogue now assassination rogue definitely needs some love however it's not the worst it's ever been uh, the the new talent talent point system. Uh, well, it's not really that new, but the, the all new talent system from Dragonflight made the spec way better, and you have access to a lot more stuff going around. Now, the fantasy of assassination rogue is still there. You still have you know lots of bleed damage and poison damage and stuff. You still have sure. like giga burst. You'll do super well in single target situations. Obviously, there's always the talk about being a, a little bit gimped in AOE, although we do have um, Tyler, who's the playing assassination rogue, <laughs> and is like like pumping in, in keys. So you can make it work in keys if you enjoy that type of playstyle. Um, you, being a rogue, you have access to all of the nice nice things a rogue can bring to the table. So there's there's no argument there. Um, it fulfills the fantasy. It tends to be a little bit more complicated in the, the rotation. Not complicated, but just maintaining a lot of stuff and making sure that everything is lined up perfectly. Um, for some people, maybe that's a drawback. Uh, I know I like it a lot, but mm. again, the rewards you get when you like play perfectly in an AOE environment, just not like up to par, especially when you have competition on the same class with, with subtlety and outlaw. And for this specific reasoning, I'm going to place this into A tier. 
I would have placed it into S tier if that rework were to be announced. Sure. But since I know you like assassinate, I think I know you like assassination. Yeah, because you always mentioned fun, assassination yeah. is like your go. I think rogue it's, spec. it's one of the easier rogue specs to get into as a new player. You, you, you think so? But you should try it out now. <laughs> it's not that easy anymore. Well, I guess I guess I'm wrong then. Yeah, no, I mean I would find it much easier to play subtlety than assassination. To be to be fair. Fair enough. Okay, Outlaw, uh, still in uh, in my department of interest here. Now, uh, this Yarr. is by no surprise, I'm going to place it into S tier. Uh, if you want to play a rogue spec that basically kind of has it all, this is the spec for you. I think what could potentially be a little bit worrisome is the amount of buttons you have to press and the amount of things you have to be aware of. But as opposed to assassination, the, the things you have to be aware of aren't directly placed on a target or on targets. Okay, you maybe have between the eyes debuff, but that's that's about it. In rest, you just have to be aware of what brought dice you roll, of you know, maintaining your slice and dice, you know, being able to like react to all of the procs and making sure like when, when things go and line up perfectly, then you make the most out of it. That being sure. said, it's very bombastic, it's very dynamic. You, you don't have a dull moment ever playing out or rogue. There's always something to press always something to do you have access this is like the 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 most cooldown reduction spec this is this is how the outlaw spec works you just have cooldown reduction baked into everything so you have access to all of the beautiful tools and toys uh for outlaw almost all of the time this is why uh it's it's a little bit per personal subjective but it's so fun and it's so engaging and it still can perform really well this is another thing it's a performer in in all capacity so S tier. You have nothing to you, say about you, You're a pirate. Yeah, that, that's it. Okay, survival, that's your department. Uh, survival Hunter. It's not in its best design wise state, uh, from my opinion, especially for a new player. It will take a little while to kind of figure out exactly what survival is trying to do. I feel like, although the talent system has done great things for a lot of the specs, it kind of makes building survival a little bit more complicated without an actual guide. It's not a complicated spec to play, period, but if you've never touched survival before, if you're not the kind of person that goes out online and is like, okay, what do I need to pick? Then you're probably gonna stumble a lot of times with survival, and some of the things might not be straightforward, there were some of the things that are very bland, some of the cooldowns don't really work well together with themselves, and I know this is a lot of personal bias into it, but I've heard this from the community a bunch of times, so it's not like I'm the only one that thinks about this. It's, it's a fun spec, it's all one of my all-time favorite, and I still enjoyed playing it, however, I did without actually deliberately looking up anything online, I did have to spend double or triple the amount of time to try to figure out exactly what is the survival tree trying to do, how am I going to play the, the class, because there's no consistency all throughout the talent tree. So from my perspective, survival is a C tier. Well, uh, the forks are coming in, I'm telling you. Okay, so this is in, in the territory of not to play, just, just saying. Almost there, not 100% not to play, but if you play it, be very, yeah, be very I'm, careful. Yeah, I'm expecting uh, a, a reward for survival in a similar vein as assassination. All right. Enhancement Shaman. Shall we just put it here? No. Oh, God damn it, Flame. No, I wouldn't put it into S tier. It's, uh, listen, Enhancement Shaman is one of the best melee specs right now. In terms of performance, obviously, it's S tier. It's been doing really well across the board all throughout the expansion. However, it is one of the more complicated, if not the complicated spec, True. melee spec to play. It's not going to be easy if you're a new player. It doesn't. It's not impossible. You can still play it and have a lot of fun. But if your goal is, you know, kind of uh, take the spec to a new level, if you want to, you know, get deep into it, it will take a little while and you do have to get used to it. It's a very punishable spec. If you mess up your rotation, it's combo in the windows with all of the abilities that you have to use is very specific. And if you mess it up, you lose a lot on damage and you might not know why or you could know but there's so many things that happen at the same time you will need a lot of practice to get good however if you do end up doing it you'll probably be the best dpser in your group hands down it's a really good spec i think we can put it into a tier in terms of design it's a very good spec as opposed to survival it has a, a really straightforward build you can you definitely uh, can pick things that make sense okay i take this because i take that that stuff makes sense, and it definitely does really well in damage. It's just a little bit too complicated for me to say, okay, this is the first one that you pick. Very good points, very good points, but it's still in the you should play oh, department. Sure. Okay, for so sure. A and S here should definitely be understood as you should definitely play this. Uh, Feral Druid. Feral Druid, I think for the most part, they did a good job. Yeah. They, uh, um, it, it tends, it, right now in, in the current season, it tends to feel... A little bit more same old, same old from the past season, which I guess is fine to some capacity. Listen, Feral has been a long time coming in terms of how it works and how the devs address it to work in a specific manner. It can still pump out great damage 
AOE wise, I think there's still some work to be done in single oh, target. For sure. But listen, it's uh, again a very fast spec, a very bombastic spec. Um, the tier set. It brings in some little RNG into it, which I don't really like too much for Feral. I, I liked it like like it was in the past, like more for sure. uh, more more stationary work uh, workarounds to play with it. However, it is fun to play. It's not the most complicated. It has some intricacies, but not as near as it has my shaman. Um, I would definitely recommend this. This this should be in a should play department. You you did you play it by any chance? Uh, did you I try played it? it quite a bit in the first season. I think the it definitely loses out on the tier set right now. And in terms of a druid spec, it has probably the most amount of drawbacks in the general talent tree. You're very much set in stone on the left side of the talent tree because that's where you get your basic feral abilities. So after, after the rework, it, uh, it was one of the best specs that got the rework. But I feel like a lot of specs have pulled ahead, like Red Paladin, in terms of design, performance, and execution of the spec. I think it's League above. An execution sentence. Uh, league above Feral. So if we're gonna if we're gonna rank Red Paladin in any way, I think for me Feral is a one or two tiers below it. Okay, I'm gonna place it here at the end of the A tier because it's still a shoot play it's, it's spec. A hundred percent. Okay, no questions asked. Frost Death Knight. Obliteration! Uh, Frost Knight has definitely been kind of the same-ish. It's probably the best version of the same that you've been playing. So if you've been playing Frost in the last couple of years, you can now play the best version of what you've been playing in the last couple of years. You can obviously now go with both Breath and Obliteration. People are probably, last time I checked, they were playing a little bit more Obliteration than Breath, which is kind of good because I know a lot of people have been Tired of Breath of Syndragosa. I know I've been playing Breath of Syndragosa from Warlords of Dran or onwards, and it's always the same. Obviously, Breath of Syndragosa has kind of undergone a lot of really good quality of life changes by rewarding you with resources up front, and at the end, it's definitely a little bit better. However, it's still, just like Marcina said, for Armsware, it's a little bit of an older place. So it's a little bit antique. A little bit out, for, outdated. Uh, outdated, for should, sure, yeah. for, for modern WoW. Staying still and having to maintain a, to a constantly decreasing bar what barely worked for Shadow Priest, which did it at range, but when you're in melee and you de definitely need to stay stuck to the bosses, but it's gonna be very frustrating. It's still good. I think it's a better than survival, but I probably will put it next to arms or yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, it is all yeah. You you should you should play it, but you know it's it's not like a hundred percent. You're gonna have the bestest of the bestest time. Sure. In a world where you have a rework like Red Palette, then you see like so many different mechanics being baked in, feeling like new. Uh, just you yeah, know, arms and it's, frost. It's, it's seem old. Outdated. It's the it's a very polished old version of frost. That's okay. Kind of okay. Old. Now, fury warrior. Now, fury warrior is a different beast. Well, uh, first of all, I think it's, it's one of the beast. most 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 uh, fun melee to play. Uh, the whole concept of that's right, fury you, warrior. You know where to put it, man. <laughs> yeah. You know where to put it. Yeah, it's it's a uh, we recommend. It's it definitely play. a fury warrior. Is usually it's a the play. it's a fury warrior, and uh, we're gonna go into one more. Um, for my opinion, is the the specs that people should start off with if you haven't played WoW before and you want to play melee war, uh, melee spec, fury warrior, and one other. Personally, I would recommend 100%. It's pretty simplistic. It's very fun. It's very responsive. You know what you need to do. As opposed, once again, to stuff like survival, you look at the talent trees like, oh, this gives me more rage. This gives me more damage. This makes that deal more rage and more damage. Okay, I'm taking all of that. And no matter what you take, no matter how you build your Fury Warrior, it's going to work. And it's going to work really well. Obviously, if you really want to push the highest of cons, you're probably going to take one of the best builds. But Fury Warrior is... Giga, giga yeah, fun. you should definitely play it. it, it it's in the you should play, not in the for you sure. Not. So far, you should not play is maybe survival, but even that is like with a grain. Uh, maybe you can try. Keep it. in mind what we mentioned. So you can yeah. play it, but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, have a demon hunter. Have a yeah, demon hunter. Which uh, uh, I mean, listen, it, it <laughs> got the changes we we're kind of asking for. We for wanted, sure. we wanted something different, something a little bit more involved with, like not the same old brain dead rotation we were used to, like for several expansions. Oh god! And yeah, we we got that, and it feels mega fun. Uh, performance wise, it's still pretty decent. I would say you can definitely see it shine in in, in, in mythic, mythic dungeons. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 there. I mean, you can also see it shine in in the raid, not as much as some other melees, but if you decide to play a Havoc Demon Hunter, uh, you will definitely have a good time because it, it's fun. Oh, for sure. It, it, it's I would I would put uh, Havoc Demon Hunter also as one of the best specs to actually play. This is what I mentioned. Uh, the other spec would be for a new player. It's very straightforward, very responsive, very simplistic. It has a lot of tools for you to deal with the encounter that saves your life. Glide can save you from fall damage. You have a lot of dodge, you have darkness, you have really good cooldowns that everybody's gonna get you in the group for. People will want to have you. And 
you can have a very simplistic play style that you can play. You can go into the momentum route, which I know a lot of people have their mixed feelings about momentum, but as a day one player of momentum, momentum is leagues easier and way more fun to play now but with the new talent tree design. It's a more modern version of a melee DPS spec, more modern for instance than Fury Warrior. It's a gateway to more complex specs like Enhancement, like uh, Outlaw and Subtle. I don't know how complex subtlety is. More complex uh, getting into, you know, the the higher echelon of WoW design for melee DPS. So I would put this in test here. Yeah, yeah, I would I would definitely agree. It's a deserved spot because again, sure. it was brain dead for so long. Now it has a little bit more something going for it. It's still simplistic, but not like brain dead simplistic. <coughs> oh, it has, it has a lot of it has, it has, you know, uh, get, getting into Master and it takes a little bit of a challenge. Uh, Red Paladins, now there's no surprise here. We made a podcast about it. We made plenty of videos about <laughs> Red Paladins. Uh, especially after the rework this is hands down one of the best melees to play like in terms of everything you want you want to have fun you want to be useful you want to feel you know you're, you're part of a group and actually uh make a, a difference you want to deal sure. damage uh off heals you see the red paladin kind of has it all granted i guess the drawback if you like really want to go into pushing a lot and being feeling stronger you're not going to feel as strong as the expansion goes at least as the season goes along since red um doesn't really quote unquote scale that well with the current stats it's kind of favoring so you're gonna have a lot of specs taken at least i think it's already been taken out by a lot of melees in the yeah, way that, that's, that's kind of like at the super high echelon and yeah. we mentioned we talked about this over the course of dragonflight and i as somebody who's uh, doubled into all of the melees in dragonflight coming from beta all the way up until now i can with hand on my heart i can definitely say that red is probably the best it's the best i said now the best melee spec designed in terms of actual design yeah. both in the general class tree for a paladin you want to feel like a paladin you definitely have your options there you don't feel like you have to sacrifice a lot like feral wood from the general talent tree and in terms of the actual play style you have really cool play styles on different sides of the talent and you can build into them with really cool and fun abilities it's not complicated and it definitely takes what uh, you know the the Parts of the simplistic that, you know, Fury would bring with a little bit of complex stuff that you would probably find into Outlaw and other rogue specs. I feel like red is probably yeah, it's, one of it's, the best specs It has its intricacies, but it's definitely a lot easier to get into nowadays. And it's very, very uh, less punished. So you can really fuck up your rotation and it's not going to be that bad overall. Obviously, if you're going to mid-max, then yeah, you're going to fill it. Next, Subtlety Rogue. Gotta love Subtlety Rogue, but I do understand not everybody... Uh, enjoys the playstyle with having uh, some specific abilities only accessible through stealth i know i've read this through the years on our sub rogue guides and sub rogue discussions not everybody understands it or not everybody just enjoys that playstyle however sure. um if you can get past that and it's basically not complicated at all it isn't a hard spec it's actually a very easy spec and it's a very rewarding spec one of the best specs to like have access like similar to outlaw but in a very um niche way it has access access to burst a lot of the times it's useful as fuck because shadow dance will allow a lot of cool things to happen like specifically you know uh cheap shots from from stealth being one of the things that are very useful for uh, subtlety specifically if you want to like do a lot of ccs in your dungeon or something bad happens around but really the fantasy of just going into uh, uh the shadows and starting to Can deal ninja. a lot yeah and uh, using like secret technique and seeing that clone also hit for like the trillions <laughs> of damages yeah, and stuff granted i will say the rotation at least the openers kind of like got a little bit more complicated nowadays with the new tier set and all of that it is something you have to get involved with a bit and study to get right but after that it's a really fun spec um i will not place it into s tier this time i'm gonna put mm. it into a tier That's because fair. i understand why some people are not attracted to it specifically. there's also down. a good incentive to actually play subtlety right now because i might be mistaken but i think it's probably the best performing melee spec period definitely yeah. in dungeons i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure on raids but it's the best melee spec uh, dungeons i've seen that yeah, it's breaking it's breaking me it's like every damage is insane unholy dead knight <laughs> Ooh, what a beast. unholy death knight! I it's, love uh, death it's been going through a roller coaster throughout the Dragonflight and throughout the last couple of years in terms of its design because it almost has these short moments where it like breaks the meta and it's like, oh my god, unholy is over, and then it kind of really dies down and it comes back and then it go goes down and it's kind of like that. Now, this is in terms of performance, viability, and all of that. If that's something that you're cool with, okay. It's not particularly a complicated spec, but it's not as easy uh, going in. And you might have to work your uh, head around a little bit around 
how all of the resources uh, work, how you're timing your cooldowns, how you're aligning all of them, how you're controlling your pets. So it, it takes a little bit to get into it. However, I feel like if you can play Unholy, if you can understand Unholy, you can understand any other melee spec in the game. It's not as hard to play as Enhancement, for instance, but it might take a little while to go into the talent tree and kind of figure things out. And pets are something else that you need to keep in mind of and how you control them, because sometimes they can bug out. However, I feel like Unholy can reward a new player with a lot of tools that can help you with a lot of mechanics, similar to Red Paladin. Um, I'll, I don't know if, you, if, if it's safe to say that you cannot be punished, but you can come back from a lot of things. You can Im immune stuns with Icebound. You can immune knockbacks and pushbacks and any kind of slows with yeah, well, Death's Advance. Yeah. You can grip stuff to you if you're ever going to play out in, out in the Outer World, or if you want just something in melee to hit. You can heal yourself. You can bring defenses to everybody. It, it has a lot of the things for you to be self-reliant and, you know, start to learn the game. So I would put this around eight tier. I don't yeah, know where you see Unholy. De definitely eight tier. Definitely eight tier. Yeah, I mean, uh, all, all of the things you said, they're, they're, they're valid. I would just want to add that it's not as punishable anymore. So it, like the, the, old, the old way you would think about Unholy is like, okay, make sure you're managing your resources properly. That's still there. But in terms of like the cooldown mm. alignment, it's like basically just go for it and you'll, you'll be just fine. Just go. Yeah. Zug, zug. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to like how it was in the past. All right. Windwalker Monk, the last on the list. Now, if you followed us on this channel, you kind of know we were always like big fans of Windwalker Monk. Sure. Uh, regardless of its performance, uh, we kind of loved it and always rooted for the spec. Now, the spec gave... not It, it, it gave us a reason to like try it out once again specifically with the new talents because i think monk was one of the best talent talent builds uh bringing back all of the cool stuff from the past and yeah. this is like really obviously you can talk about performance okay they're not doing that great in single target no, i've seen i've seen monks doing great in single target they're oh, doing they're, they're, they're very now. yeah very respectable damage as well aoe there was always this this flavor um i think since like the beginning of shadowlands and stuff was like Sure, AoE is like a super niche thing for Windwalkers, but aside from what everybody has the perception of when it comes to Windwalker monks, this is a cool aspect to play. Oh, it is, the it fantasy, is. the mechanics, the access to abilities, the mobility, and all of the uh, cooldowns and spells and thematics of it, it just makes it one of the best to try it. Okay. It's, it used to be more complicated in the past. It's way easier now with the, the new talent to, introduced in Dragonflight. So you can opt, on, opt in for a, an easier time playing. So you don't have to be stressed out with everything uh, that, that was that's happening right now. But I feel I would recommend this one. This, is, this so is, should be in a, a should it's play. It's definitely a good spec. And for one particular reason, I would probably put it into S tier is that for when, if if monk is a class that pulls you to it, I think it, well, the best thing that I that I came came out with monk is that you just have all of the toys. Yeah, all you, of the you toys that were cool it. to play, as as opposed to other specs that kind of get some weird cooldowns. Monk seems to get all of the fun stuff that it used to have uh, over the years, and you're just gonna have a lot of fun. And it's really hard not to do a lot of damage, which is something that you're probably gonna be interested in. Plus, monk, similar to death knight, has a lot of abilities and uh, and tools that let you handle the encounters, handle the terrain, and handle what's happening around with teleporting around, putting rings of peace, immuning damage, or executing stuff. It's really, really fun. Yeah, definitely recommend. So, in just a conclusion here, like, the me the melee specs from A and S are definitely should play, okay? In the B tier, we have Arms and Frost, which is still should play, but with a little bit of a grain of salt. Like You, you, you kind of need to keep in mind a couple of things that are not particularly obvious, yeah. and you, you might not, you know, enjoy it as much as, you know, SNA maybe. Yeah, and even Survival, we didn't place it into D tier as in you should not play this. It's very close to, to you should not play this. However, there are a lot of folks who still enjoy the spec, and there's still good things about it. I just feel we keep it in there and probably move it into a should play once they, they get their shit in order to make it work. It has potential to be one of the better melee For sure. It has a, a range of utilities that let you deal with a lot of stuff out in the world and a melee hunter brings a lot of value to a team. But when, you at, when you're in a world that has Red Paladin, Fury Warrior, Windwalker, it's, you, you have to put a, a yeah. little bit of a gap between there's, them. There, there's a world out there with... <laughs> this melee specs which will happen and they take the spot for uh survival hunters now thank you patreons for supporting our content love you guys check the link Shit in it. the description for more details on that and also be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss out on all of the daily videos we put out on marcelian online 
All right, you did that. Go ahead. You have a couple of seconds. One, two, three. Did you subscribe? Oh, did definitely. you click that? They clicked it, man. Surely you clicked it. All right, thank you for watching, everybody. Catch y'all on the next one. Bye. Take care. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.